Hello all, welcome. Um, I, this is Greg Downey and uh, the tape I'm making is for Anthropology 151, although you might be finding it some other way. Um, at Macquarie University in the introduction to well, human evolution and diversity, we ask you to do a literature review. And some of you may wonder, well, how, how the hell do I do a literature review? And this video is intended to help provide some, some basic starting points. Now, the first thing I want to sort of talk about is where do I f where do I find a topic? Now, there's some topics already in the unit outline, but that's not the whole extent of what you can do. Um, there's all kinds of new discoveries, and of course, the, you know, we can't keep up. They're, they're happening so so rapidly that in some cases they've happened since we put together the the, the unit outline. So, so one place to look is something like Bioanthropology News on Facebook, where people are posting uh, new discoveries, new articles, um, you know. Um, New kinds, of, new discoveries of bones or remains, new theoretical articles, all kinds of interesting stuff. Um, primates. Um, another place to look is one of the major science sites. So um, there's three I've put up here: Physorg, Science News, and Science Daily. And any one of these you could look through and sort of see what they've got recently on human evolution. Um, for example, this is uh, you know it's got a whole list of different things. It's going biology look for new discoveries and you can actually search. Um, I, I tend to use Science Daily. What you should realize is these are not refereed articles. Science Daily, let's look at Human Evolution, Human Evolution and Science Daily. Now these are not refereed articles. These are press releases. These are articles about articles. So um, for example, on February 17th, 2012, there was a piece that came out linking human evolution and climate change. Now in a press release, the way you can tell it, first of all, is it's, it's very short. But then the press releases often have, after you read the whole article, or in the article somewhere, they actually give the titles and where the things are getting presented or where the journals they appeared in. Now, what you need to look for is actually the article. So let me find a, let me find a, a good one here. Let's look up, um, there's been all kinds of interesting stuff happening with Neanderthals. So let's look up Neanderthal. Um, here's a good one. Uh, unique Neanderthal, there's a whole bunch, of course. So in this case, there's only two recent, but um, Trust me, there's way more than this. So this one talks about the unique Neanderthal or morphology due to scraping, not spearing. This is a paper I saw this recently, where they were looking at what would cause the musculature of the Neanderthal arm. Now, if you read through the press release, okay, it's quite short, but it tells you where to find it. So it turns out that this article is in PLOS One. Now I happen to know that PLOS One um, is an open access journal, so you can get those articles no matter where you where you are, but um, I'll, I'll just show you how to get this one. So, um, the lead research is led by Colin Shaw. So I'm going to look for Colin Shaw. I'm going to look for, I'm going to go to uh, www.plus1.org. Just so happens that I know the address of PLOS One, but you could look it up in Google and find it, no problem. Um, hmm. I'm going to look for articles by Colin Shaw. And here we go. Unique suites of trabecular bone feature characterized locomotor behavior in humans and non-human animals. Oh, it's a different one. Um, here we go. This is the one we're looking for. Uh, I just recognize this is locomotor behavior, and it's is it an older? Actually, it's just about the same time. So Neanderthal humeri may reflect adaptation to scraping tasks, not spear thrusting. So in this case, because it's an open access journal, which is a journal anybody can get access to, you can just click on it, and it'll take you to the abstract of the article. Right here, this is the abstract, which is what's describing what the article says. And you can download the article. Download the PDF over here. Now let's say that I have um, found a, a, an interesting piece, but I, it wasn't in a journal that was open access. So I, I find it, and I can't get to the journal. So I go to the library. Whoops. For whatever reason, Campus Library. Now, the Campus Library has a thing called a journal finder. Now, in the journal finder, I can find out what the, let's say um, I found an article in the um, Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. That's a journal art that you'll find a lot of um, Good evolution articles in uh, Proceedings of the National Academy. So I look down here, and sure enough, here's Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, PNAS. It just so happens, sorry about that noise, um, the Proceedings of the National Academy is electronic. Um, click most of the good journals now, most of the big journals are. 
and there's PNAS, Proceedings of the National Academy. I just like to say PNAS. All right, so let's say I was looking for an article um, that appeared in, in Proceedings of the National Academy on, um, what's it, Homo floriensis. So I'll type in floriensis. And I'll go try to find the article. Hmm. All right, I didn't find any articles on floriensis. That's a little strange. So let's just see what they have on human evolution. Oh wow, all kinds of papers on human evolution. In fact, uh, 68,838. All right, that's too broad. So, that's another one on the Anatol Birth Canal. All right, let's just say that you find an article that you like. You want, to, you want to start. Now, some of these articles are open access. Some of these articles, however, you can only get through the library. So, I'm going to go to the abstract on this one, Neanderthal Birth Canal Shape and the Evolution of Human Childbirth. So that's kind of interesting. Go to the abstract. I can download the paper over here. Full text PDF is available downloaded. And I can get these. Now, the nice thing about this is we can begin to use um, the, the database has a whole set of tools that allows us to go to the next stage. So once we find an article, we read the article, we write a short abstract. Now this abstract, A, is way too long, and B, if you copy it, it'll come up as plagiarism, because of course this abstract is going to be out there on the on the web. So you can read the abstract to get a sense of the article, but I suggest you read the article, at least the parts that you can understand. There'll be some parts you'll have to skip probably, but that's normal. That's pretty normal in sciences. Um, but sometimes certain sections of an article may be over your head. That's not a problem. Just skip to the next section and, and pick it up again. So how do I find um, interesting articles that are related to this one? And this is where the literature review actually starts. There's two things you want to look for over here. Citing articles all right, and different sorts of search engines that allow you to see what this article is related to or how it's connected. So citing articles are articles that cite this one. Now, because it's such a recent article, normally there wouldn't be a lot. But it turns out that using Web of Science, which is a database I strongly recommend, there's actually 23 articles that cite this article already. That's a lot. Um, although I guess now it turns out it was actually published in 2009. So that makes sense. 23 articles. So I found this article on the Neanderthal birth canal. I'm interested in this article because I'm interested in childbirth. And so I decided I'm going to look for the citing articles. When I click on this, it'll take me to Web of Science. Now Web of Science is a, is a database that we have access to here at university. Um, so I strongly recommend you get used to using it because it's a valuable tool. It'll say Web of Knowledge, but Web of Science, and Web, they're, they're, it's one organization. They're sort of an umbrella. Um, so Web of Science. Now, in each one of these articles that are listed here on the right, cites the article that we were reading. Now, I want to focus on just those that are in evolutionary biology and anthropology. So I'm going to refine my search. And I'm going to pick up just those. I'm going to get rid of the cell biology ones and stuff like that. So now, I'm, now I've narrowed it down. Human pelvis and long bones reveal differential preservation of ancient populations, history of migration out of Africa. Not terribly interesting, but it's a possibility. Um, stature estimate, estimation for complete long bones, middle plastic, eh, no, I'm not terribly that. Uniquely modern pattern of endocranial development. Insights from a new cranial reconstruction of Neanderthal newborn. Well, I'm kind of interested in that because that's about how the inside of the head is developed. And then they were using a Neanderthal newborn that they've discovered to try to figure out how the inside of the head grows. Now, I'm kind of interested in that. So how do I get a hold of this article? Journal of Human Evolution. Well, the nice thing about working through the library using Web of Science is there's this thing called Article Linker. Now, Article Linker allows you to go directly to find out if that article is in our holdings at the library. So if I click on Article Linker, it opens a new tab, and it'll tell me whether I can get that article. And it just so happens that we do have access to it. I can just click directly on here, and it'll take me straight to the article. So in this case, I'm showing you how to go straight to the article. And now what it'll probably put up is it usually puts up the page with the abstract, and then it has a little button where I can download the article. Can I tell you, this is like the coolest thing, because back in the day when I was going to school, we had none of these tools, none of these online tools. This was so much harder. And it also so happens that I can see over here, they would even show me some of the graphics that appear in the article. So I can tell it's directly relevant to what I'm interested in, which is brain shape, um, piecing together this skull, trying to figure out how the newborn's um, brain is developing. This is pretty cool. You may not understand it all. Typically, some of the stuff is over my head, because, um, you know, 
to, to be able to publish in these journals, you have to have some pretty sophisticated science. So don't be surprised if, if you're not catching it all. Look at the abstract, look at the introduction, look at the discussion especially, because that's where they'll talk about um, you know, the importance of the article. And that's how you really get a sense for which ones you want to look up. Now, 